Hello and welcome to the Beefy Tech channel. Today's video is about PBO2 Tuner, which is an undervolting application that allows us to set an undervolt and custom power limits on the Ryzen 5000 and 7000 CPUs. This information is coming courtesy of GitHub and their guide on how to set it all up and get it running. So I'll link the entire guide in the description below. I have a Ryzen 7 5800X3D in my system currently and it warms up like somewhere in Africa if you throw any stress test at it. And although I've never had any issues in game, lowering the heat in this situation actually ends up resulting in higher frequencies under load. So the second I tried PBO Tuner 2 in Call of Duty, I instantly saw gains in my average frame rate. Therefore, I thought this would be a great video to show you guys that it not only exists, but it can be extremely beneficial and also walk you through the install. Before I walk you guys through on how to actually set it all up and get it running, I would actually like to demonstrate the performance difference between running it and not running it, because it is very important to know if this is worth your time to do. Keep in mind I'm using a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which is a CPU that gets extremely hot in comparison to normal, normal Ryzen 5000, meaning that this might actually be more beneficial for me, somebody with an X3D chip, than for somebody with a non-X3D chip. But regardless, I wanted to demonstrate this because check out the frequency. So this is a test within OCCT, which is a stress bench application, and it's currently running at 4.3 gigahertz average. My current temperature is 71 degrees as I just checked and I'll show you guys too just here. It loads slowly. There you go, 71 degrees on the hottest point of the CPU. And this is about where it's going to sit at. It might jump to 72 at times as you can see. And if you leave it more, it might even hit 73. Now. I've got PBO tuner right here, PBO2 tuner, with the curve limit set to, uh, curve uh, set to zero and the limits to default. I'm going to change these to what I usually run, which is 120 PPT, 75, and then 110 on the EDC, click set, and then input all of the curve to negative 25 on all of them, as I have tested mine and this is how it runs best. And I'll walk you through on how to set your own settings here, so you can actually figure out your own CPU's limits because this does not apply to every single CPU. And let's watch in real time what the temperature differences are. I'll stop this test now and restart it. And you're going to see that while we went up to about 71 to 72 degrees before, now it will not really pass 66, 67, just from something as small as that. And the most important part is that the frequencies will actually be higher. So as you can see, the initial boost point will stick around 67. And now we go to the frequency and check this out. Our frequencies are suddenly 150 megahertz higher, and they are consistently 150 megahertz higher, being able to boost to its maximum frequency, absolutely no problem. Whereas before we were stuck at 4.3 gigahertz within this test. Going back to the temperature, check this out fluctuating between 66 to 69 instead of going above 70. This seems small, but as you can see, it resulted in higher frequencies within this test and it results within higher frequencies for Warzone, which uses most of your CPU's cores if you have an 8-core CPU. Alright, we are back on GitHub, GitHub's page and I want to mention this video wouldn't be possible without their findings, so I recommend you follow the link in the description and check out their full guide. I'll essentially demonstrate exactly what the guide specifies already, but with my own pre-tested settings. So what you want to do is, of course, check out their guide yourself, but if you want to get straight into things, go to debuckclee.7zip and click on it. It's going to take you to this page where you're going to see this file right here from Google Drive, and you're going to want to click this, download it, and extract it. The only reason I'm not going to demonstrate how to do that is because it's pretty basic stuff, and you can indeed Google how to do that on your own, Plus, I already have it, so I would just download the application again if I was to do it. But this is where you find it, extract it, and then you should be able to easily access it in your own computer. Regardless, now going to PBO2 Tuner 2, as you can see, I have my limits set in place to negative 25. The best way to get this rolling and to get this testing is to start at negative 10 and go from there. Start at negative 10 on all of these without changing any of these limits and go into, let's say, OCCT, which is an application meant to stress test your CPU and GPU and any other PC parts you have, and just run the stress test for 5-10 minutes and then input a different number. So let's say you had negative 10 that was stable on OCCT with the CPU test on for like 5 minutes, 
try negative 15, then negative 20, negative 25, up to negative 30 is the maximum. And you only get that if you have a good bin on a CPU. Once you get these going, you're actually able to also change the system limits to limit your CPU's power, TDC and EDC. And these all have to do with voltage and current. And most of the time, uh, all this will do is just further decrease the temperature if you set this lower. And it doesn't actually hurt your performance in any way, shape or form. If you take it down from the default 142, which this is, the default is 142, 95 and 140. And if you have them set to default, you're going to see exactly these numbers in yours. If you have a 5800X3D, mind you, this only applies to 5800X3D. It's different for every CPU. And you can change these according to some forums and stuff to 10 or 20 lower on each and every one of them depending on how good the CPU bin you have is. All right, so the very first thing you want to do is go to the bottom left corner by the search bar and search for Task Scheduler. Once you find Task Scheduler, click on it and it's going to open up to this menu over here. At this menu right here, you can just click to enlarge, but it doesn't really matter. You want to click Create Task. So you're going to want to give this a name and ideally something that is easy to figure. Let's say you got a negative 20 offset going and it works perfectly for you. You're going to name this negative 20 PBO to tuner offset. Sorry, I can't spell. And then go to the description and put in that it is a negative 22, let's say all of eight of your cores. There we go. And then we're going to go here and click run whether user is logged on or not and click do not store password. As I've had some issues when I finish setting all this up where it asks me for a password. So that way it keeps that uh, from happening. And if you have Windows 10 or 11, select the Windows 10 option and you're done with this page. Then you're going to want to go to triggers and click new trigger. Once you do that, go up to the begin task part and click add startup. Once you've done that, click OK. Now you're back at the triggers page. You're going to want to go to new again on the same page. Go back up to the begin new uh, the task and go on an event. Once you've done that, go to custom and click new event filter. You're going to click new event filter and your PC will lag for a split second and then this screen will appear. What you're going to want to do is have by log selected and then go to event logs and click on the bottom arrow plus arrow and click system. Once you've done that, you can just click out of that and it will remember the event log whenever system wake up happens In the event source. You're going to want to click and scroll down all the way until you find power troubleshooting. This might take a little second to find as uh, you can see it's a bit finicky with scrolling all the way down smoothly. But you want to look for power troubleshooting. Let me see if I can find it quick here. There we go. There it is. Power troubleshooting. Power troubleshooter, sorry. And click on it and then click out. And you have finished this part. Oh, no, sorry. And you want to click one over here. And now you have finished this part of the tutorial and click OK. You can then click OK to back out of this screen and you have finished with the triggers. Now you want to go to actions and then click new and then click start a program and browse for your PBO2 tuner. Mine is already pulled up. You'll have to search for yours either over here or wherever you have it stored. You have to find it and click on PBO tuner itself and click open. This will have the program start up and then the add arguments is how you start up with your offset applied. So what you're going to do, let's assume that you have a negative 25 offset or 20 offset. Sorry, because we've been doing this. You want to do negative 20, negative 20, negative 20, negative 20, as many you know times as you have cores. Let's say you have eight as I do, for example, you're going to want to do it eight times. And there we go. That would be eight and click OK. And once this is done, you're going to want to click uh, conditions. And also make sure that you don't have any of these uh, ticked in the wrong way. So here it says start the task only if the computer AC power is on. You can turn that off and then you can go to settings and make sure that you don't have anything that stops the task. Because, for example, this stops it after three days of running. So uh, you can disable all of these. It shouldn't matter too much, but you can also uh, have it to run as soon as possible, even if it is missed. So you can select that and then click OK. And right now you have finished scheduling your task. And if you have any questions, you could indeed go on GitHub's uh, guide itself and double check if you've missed something. And if you want to edit anything regarding your task scheduler, all you have to do is right click on it, click properties, and you can now go through all, everything that you have already set 
and uh, let's say you can apply a different curve instead of a negative 20 20 20 you can do a negative 25 without having to redo everything and all that would mean for you is you would have to go to actions and click edit and here you would have to input negative 25 instead of 20. All right guys I hope today's video was plenty helpful to you and if you have any questions do not hesitate to comment down below as I'm more than ready to answer for the following week. <laughs> I've been doing my best to keep up with all the comments and all the recent support and it is getting a bit overwhelming because the second you've got more than a hundred people commenting it is extremely difficult to respond to all of them but I'm doing my best and I hope to keep having you guys come back to watch my videos because I love doing this. I, it's so stupid and so nerdy but this type of guide makes me happy to do because I know it will help somebody out there to gain a lot more performance from their existing machine without having to spend a penny and that is a win-win for everybody. Anyway guys, thank you for watching today's video and I hope to see you next time. Peace.